This is shuttle launch control at T minus three hours, 39 minutes and counting. Today, NASA will embark on this 92nd space shuttle flight in the 17 year history of the shuttle program. This particular shuttle flight represents its historical significance. This marks John Glenn's return to space for the first time in 36 years. The near nine-day mission features the deployment and retrieval of the Spartan satellite designed to study the sun's corona and its effects on the Earth. Tests will be performed on electronic and thermodynamic equipment to be installed on the Hubble Space Telescope during its next servicing mission in two years. The Space Hab module aboard Discovery contains 30 smaller experiments ranging from material science to plant growth to developing new techniques for delivering vital anti-tumor medications. We are just hours away from NASA's 92nd Space Shuttle launch and the 25th flight of the Orbiter Discovery with a crew of seven astronauts. And we have the flight crew for STS-95 getting ready for a historic mission today, mission STS-95. From the left, we have Japanese astronaut Dr. Chiaki Mukai, a one-time shuttle veteran and the first Japanese woman to fly in space. Mukai is one of several Japanese astronaut representatives from NASDA. Seated next to her, payload specialist John Glenn, flying for the second time in space today. He circled the Earth three times in 1962 on the first American orbital mission. We have pilot Steve Lindsay, a one-time shuttle veteran. He will assist Brown in control of the shuttle during the mission and is involved in the space hab science. Commander Kurt Brown, flying for the fifth time, Today on the space shuttle, he has overall responsibility for the safety and success of the mission. Payload Commander Steve Robinson, a one-time shuttle veteran. Robinson is responsible for a variety of payloads and related elements. He celebrated his 43rd birthday on Monday, the day the countdown began. We have European Space Agency astronaut and shuttle rookie, Pedro Duque. We also have Mission Specialist Scott Parazinski, a two-time shuttle veteran. He will be involved in the Spartan and testing components for the Hubble Space Telescope. Crew has been awake for about an hour now, seated around at the breakfast table. And in the center of the table, we have a traditional cake with the insignia for this flight, bearing the number seven, also has the shuttle and uh, a small mercury capsule encircling the shuttle. Crew next will have a weather briefing. Commander and pilot will be involved in going over weather scenarios here at Kennedy Space Center. And the weather continues to be 100% go for launch this morning here in Florida. And we do have uh, the flight crew getting uh, suited up. Commander Kurt Brown, flying for the fifth time today. Kurt Brown obviously ready to go and launch the uh, space shuttle today. We've got pilot Steve Lindsay, this is flying for the second time. He will assist Brown during the rendezvous and retrieval of the Spartan payload and will be involved in several payloads including the solid surface combustion experiment, and also will assist in the shuttle landing. And Commander uh, Brown and Pilot Lindsay were the last two to be suited up. They were involved in a weather briefing just completed with Flight Director Linda Hamm and also weather briefers around the world. European Space Agency astronaut Pedro Duque flying for the first time today, getting suited up. He was born in Madrid, Spain. He is also trained at the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center in Russia as a backup for several of the Mir space station flights. Quite busy in the suit up room at the Kennedy Space Center uh, Operations and Checkout Building. Across the room, we've got Mission Specialist Steve Robinson. He's the payload commander, designated as Mission Specialist One. This will be his second flight today. He is the prime mission specialist for the International Extreme Ultraviolet Hitchhiker Experiment. He will be involved in space hab systems, robotic experiments, the robot arm, and payload bay door closing.
Next we have Mission Specialist 2, astronaut Scott Parazinski, making his third flight today. He serves as the flight engineer and will assist the commander and pilot with ascent and re-entry checklists and in monitoring the vehicle systems. He will also be involved in several payloads, the Spartan, the Host, and the Extreme Ultraviolet Hitchhiker. NASDA astronaut Chiaki Mukai. She's flying into space for the second time today. She was the first female astronaut from Japan. And we've got payload specialist number two, John Glenn. This was his second flight into space today. He's going through uh, various checks required, making sure that we can circulate air into the spacesuits. There's lots of checks performed in the suit up room to verify all systems on the suits are operating and will be able to support launch today. Glenn's first historical flight aboard the Friendship 7 Mercury capsule in 1962 was the first time an American orbited the Earth. 36 years later, his primary duties on the shuttle will be studies on aging, including sleep cycles, immune system, and changes in bone density and muscle mass. On Glenn's first flight, back in 1962, he had 10 launch attempts before actually launching on the 11th try on February the 20th in 1962. And we see Commander Kurt Brown, Dr. Chiaki Mukai, payload specialist John Glenn behind Kurt Brown, pilot Steve Lindsay behind Dr. Mukai, and behind Lindsay we have Scott Perezinski and Steve Robinson and to also Pedro Duque. Members of the support team following and employees wishing them well. These are members of the astronaut support team here at Kennedy Space Center. We'll be riding down a couple floors to the, to the ground level where the crew will be getting out uh, into the outdoors out near the Astro van. And Commander Kurt Brown going inside the Astro van. Today we have astronaut Rick Lenahan here to help describe some of the details of the crew strap-in. The commander, commander pulling himself up, getting into position there. It's a bit different when you go in the orbiter. I mean, a lot, when you see the orbiter, you know, you, you think of it, some, some people think of it, and I know I did at first, as, as looking like uh, an airplane because you normally see it in a flying configuration or on the ground. But when you're in a launch configuration, you're obviously on, on your back with the orbiter's nose pointing straight up in the air. So uh, the, uh, the spatial <laughs> reality, I guess, of when you first walk in there can be a little dis uh, disconcerting because the uh, floor uh, becomes the wall and the wall becomes the ceiling and vice versa. And so you have to learn how to crawl in and what handholds you can use and where you can put your knees and feet and hands so you're not touching switches or important things like that, but yet also be able to move around and position yourself to get up and in the seat. Now you get a shot here of the mid-deck and you can see Carlos is there and... Uh, here comes Chucky, and there's the handhold we talked about a second ago in terms of what she can use to maneuver herself into her seat. 
And now she's laying on the back of her seat, and you can see that she laid down on the parachute with her harness on, and she's positioning herself now so Carlos can uh, get the straps and everything configured so she's able to be strapped in efficiently. And here comes Steve. Now watch him get up into the pilot seat. He's got to get his hands up high and actually boost himself almost like a pull-up into the seat and move his feet around and being very careful not to hit the center panel, the C3 panel. And then he lowers himself into the seat again very carefully, brings his arms down. And uh, you can imagine with the extra weight of the suit and the harnesses that uh, it's not all that easy a thing. OTC, OECC. Go ahead, sir. PS2 on board at this time. PS1, Colchak. PS1 in Houston, I read you loud and clear. Ohio, Shiaki. Ohio, the diamond food, thank you. Loud and clear. You can see how well those silum sticks show up uh, in the lower light down there. It's kind of impressive to see them. And uh, there's a senator using the handholds to get himself in. Just bounced right in there, and he's up in his seat. And uh, you heard the designations before as PS or MS. And uh, I'm sure everyone knows that the uh, PS means payload specialist. Uh, Chucky is payload specialist one. And uh, Senator Glenn is payload specialist two. And then Stephen over on the side will be uh, a mission specialist and uh, two mission specialists on the flight deck, and of course the pilot and CDR. OTC, CS2, comm check, over. CS2, loud and clear. Good morning, John. Thank you much. We are pleased to be joined this afternoon by another of NASA's original seven Mercury astronauts, Scott Carpenter, and he has a special message for the crew aboard Discovery. Yes, at this point in the count, it seems appropriate to say to the shuttle Discovery crew, good luck, have a safe flight, and to say once again, Godspeed, John Glenn. Kurt, the launch team is go. Your vehicle's ready. Uh, the weather's beautiful out there. On behalf of the entire launch team, you and the crew at Discovery have a great mission. Thank you very much, sir, and Discovery's crew is definitely ready to go, and uh, we would like you to proceed. Orbiter XS arm now moving away from the shuttle Discovery as we get a final glimpse of the cockpit where the seven astronauts await the launch of STS-95. The orbiter flight control systems are being moved through their pre-programmed pattern and they will be verified they are ready for launch. The three main engines are being gimbaled and positioned for launch. Flight crew OTC, close and lock your visors, initiate O2. And on this uh, historic mission, let the wings of discovery lift us onto the future. And CDR copies, we'll close our visors and go to pseudo two. T minus 15. T minus 10, nine, eight. We have a go for engine start. Five, four, three, two, one. Booster ignition and liftoff of Discovery with a crew of six astronaut heroes and one American legend. Houston Discovery, roll program. Roger, roll, Discovery.
One minute and 50 seconds into the flight, Discovery now at an altitude of 25 miles, traveling at a speed of 2,900 miles an hour. The next event will be burnout and separation of Discovery's twin solid rocket boosters. Discovery Houston, two engine banjo. Copy, two engine banjo. Hello, Houston. This is PS2, and they let me get sprung out of the mid-deck for a little while. We're just going by Hawaii, and that is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, hey, roger that. Glad you're enjoying the show. Boy, enjoying the show is right. This is beautiful. The best part is to do a trite old statement, zero G, and I feel fine. Hey, Roger that. We had a bunch of your friends asking about you today, and they were wondering how you're feeling, and I'm sure they're he glad to hear that. First report is great. I don't know what happens on down the line, but today is beautiful and great, and Hawaii is just, I just can't even describe it. Well, I dare say you'll see that view a couple more times before you come back. And, Beamer, let the record show that... Uh, that John has a smile on his face and it goes from one ear to the other one and we haven't been able to remove it yet. Well, that's just great and that sounds pretty familiar. Yeah, Beamer, and it's really catching too because Pedro has the same smile, but um, he tends to have that all the time, but his is you know, a lot bigger from up here. And Houston Discovery for MET. Go ahead, Discovery. Yeah, Beam, I just want the record to show that uh, we've just passed four hours, 55 minutes, and 23 seconds. And uh, I promised I'd take Senator Glenn on uh, his second flight and make it a little bit longer than his first flight. And we've already accomplished that. So we uh, we're a bunch of smiling faces up here. And Roger that. Congratulations to the Senator for uh, doubling his space flight hours. Kurt's a man of his word. I'm now doubled on my space time and building up every second here. Thanks a lot. 